All right, welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. Let's shift our focus now to cricket. When news broke late last month that Ghanese businessman Chris Bassad had sold the Jamaica Talos franchise back to the Caribbean Premier League due to a lack of support from the Jamaican government, it further highlighted the sense of gloom around cricket in Jamaica. Jeff Miller, the departing Talos CEO, was quoted in the Jamaica Observer as saying, Jamaica is a big brand, a global brand. From what I understand, the government doesn't need CPL or the Talawas to showcase their brand. Maybe Antigua will want that global exposure and Jamaica doesn't need it. We were told on more than one occasion that the other sports bring more to Jamaica. But for the biggest Caribbean island to have iconic stadiums, have some of the world's greatest cricketers and yet not have cricket in Jamaica, it's bad. Well, the Honourable Minister of Sport, Olivia Babsy Grange, has come out defending her ministry and the Jamaican government. We did our best to give support to the Talawas. The Talawas bear our country's name but are not a national team and are therefore not covered in the yearly allocations to the Jamaica Cricket Association. However, we had sought to provide special support to the Talawas at the level that our funds will permit. It is estimated that the Talawas required US $1 million each year or more than $150 million Jamaican dollars. In order to give them more, we would have had to cut the funding to more than 40 national sports federations such as football, netball, track and field who depend on government to run their programs and have been requesting additional sums which we are challenged to provide. Also, the Jamaica Cricket Association receives more funding each year from the Sports Development Foundation than all other national federations, except football and track and field. So, team, what did you make of the minister's response to Jamaica losing their CPL franchise? And Lance, I know there are a lot of mixed reactions. Uh, many people will agree with um, Babsy Grange. Some are saying that that's not a good enough response. I'm not sure I would say it's not a good enough response. It, from her perspective, is a, a reasonable position that she's putting forward. It's just that there are, there are other issues on the other side of the equation that, that puts you thinking about, you know, where some of this money could be directed. And um, I know that running a country financially isn't easy. We know that in the Caribbean, you know, the, 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 the issues of health and education and, you know, basic necessity necessities of of the society demand the government provide you know a, a proper living for people so there is the school of thought that the government has to be very balanced in how it allocates its funds to deal with these issues the fact is though that as we have all accepted for decades now that sport is a very underestimated aspect of of any society and especially in the Caribbean, where cricket traditionally has been such a, a, a strong part of the, the society, the, the cricket fan in Jamaica is hurt by certain developments as far as the game is, is concerned. Um, if, she, if, if Babsy Grange is suggesting that based on the, the allocation that they have designed or or allocated for sport and uh, the CPL franchise is asking for an amount that throws the entire equation out of whack um, that is a position that she can put forward but on the other side of the equation the huge benefits that can accrue from staging CPL matches at the same time cannot be scoffed at yeah and to me while I respect what she has said um, there is that aspect as well that she makes no reference of because there is huge benefits financially to a country staging CPL cricket yeah. if, if, if properly you know, implemented. So that is, that is the aspect of her response that, that is missing for me. Yeah, the balance. But, yeah, but I do, I do accept that governments have a, a tight show to run financially and um, it's easy for any person 
with a vested interest to say you need to put the money here. But the governments, um, it's on their shoulders to make these decisions. I just think that the, the other side of the equation is, is missing in what she has said. Yeah, I think she failed to mention, Ricardo, you know, the benefits that come with the CPL. What did you make of her response? To be honest, I'm not completely sure. Um, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I think there has to be an evaluation of how much the Ministry of Sport in Jamaica spends as opposed to, let's say, the, the, the government of Barbados or the government of Grenada because she makes what I consider to be an important point. And I'm not saying she is right because the numbers may turn out to show that no, there is still not enough investment in sports in, in, in Jamaica. Um, but I think the evaluation as to how much is spent on sports in Jamaica versus how much is spent um, in the other Caribbean countries, because yes, in Barbados, in Grenada, in St. Kitts and Nevis, where maybe cricket is the dominant sport, it maybe is easier to spend a large chunk of your, your sports allocation to cricket. To cricket, yeah. It might not be as easy in the Jamaican. Um, set up. Um, so I, I think all of that has to be done. And maybe it is that we here at Sportsmax will have to do that research ourselves and come up with those numbers because I think only then can we truly know if what the minister is saying is, is really making dollars and cents here. Um, because I think otherwise we're all going off feeling, this is how I feel about it. Um, but the one thing is for sure, Lance and Mariah, is that the, 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 the Jamaican cricket fan is frustrated yeah. and has been frustrated for a long time. One, because for a long time, before 2023, at all levels, um, Jamaica's cricket has, had been going backwards, um, finishing at the lower end of U15 and U17 and U19 tournaments of senior competitions as well. Um, of course, if you're not including um, the, the Jamaica Talawas, which, as the minister pointed out, is a franchise team and not, not a national a team. National team. Yeah. Um, and so there was frustration with the Jamaica Cricket Association um, and with Jamaica now not bidding for matches in the T20 World Cup, then you lose the CPL franchise. Accumulatively, it comes across as if right across the board, there isn't enough care for the sport of cricket. Um, and that there is generally a feeling that cricket is dying and it does not make sense to invest in the sport in the way that I think the genuine fans um, want the government and want private sector to invest in the sport of cricket. Um, but I think it's just really difficult to make a determination because you're always going to have the different viewpoints. But as, as in, in trying to determine what makes sense and what doesn't or what is right and what is wrong, I just feel that we need some pure numbers to help in this debate. And the thing is, Lance, you know, as a government, the fact that Jamaica would have hosted the CPL before, people would have grown accustomed and they would feel as if, okay, so then you're going backward because if we could have done it before with whatever allocation we had at that point, and we don't know the exact number, so we don't know if it was more at that time or if it's more now, or they'd feel as if the money is being mismanaged or mishandled because it's not being, and as Ricardo pointed out, it's not only the CPL, it's various cricket tournaments that, you know, Jamaica has refrained from, of course, hosting and all those different things. So, again, I understand the frustration because people feel as if this one sport in particular is being treated badly, it's being neglected. Yeah. And it wasn't clear in the release from the Ministry of Sport, right? But um, there is an aspect of it that says, Minister Grain said cumulatively her ministry's sports division and the Sports Development Foundation 
provided direct cash payments of 13 million Jamaican to the Talawas, including the purchase of tickets for matches between 2015 and 2019. Now, from what I remember, the, the CEO and the owners of the Jamaica Talawas pointed to 2019 as the time when government support stopped for the Jamaica Talawas. And so I don't think anybody is disputing that there has been support on the part of the government in the past. It is about... Since 2019. Since 2019, that support has been non-existent, essentially, and that has made it more difficult um, for the franchise to flourish and made it impossible for the owners to continue or to maintain the franchise in Jamaica. Yeah, and I'm not sure where someone like an Andre Russell would stand on his political leanings, because when I heard him recently... Uh, complained that he's very disappointed with uh, the country losing the CPL franchise and not um, bidding to stage World Cup T20 matches. Um, it just came across to me as a genuine cricket superstar who was worried about the trend that he was seeing for the game that he loves and the game that has brought him riches and the game that he would like to see inspire younger players coming up after him be be you know motivated to be a part of yeah. and he just felt as if the stage is not being set yeah. for young teenage cricketers in Jamaica to to be attracted to to the sport and aspire to be professional cricketers because there is more the government can do to assist in that process i think yeah. that's what that's a general um, point that Andre Russell was making. So this is a, a critical issue, yeah. and uh, Babs Grange has been known to be a strong supporter of sport in the past, and um, I think there are cricket fans now who are beginning to, to question her. Yeah. Certainly with cricket. Honest. Certainly <laughs> sure. with cricket, because in, in many other sports, I don't think there can be a complaint that uh, Olivia Grange has been supportive and helpful in mm. her assistance as the sports minister but, but but quickly again Lance and Mariah because I think while Babs de Grange is responsible specifically for sport in Jamaica I think this issue goes beyond her yes I think when you look at the events that we're talking about the Cricket World Cup the Caribbean Premier League and the investment that is required that needs to come from a higher level that needs to come from the level of the prime minister. That needs to come from the level of the finance minister. That needs to come from the level of tourism. And then it's a cumulative yes. effort with the sports ministry being part of that. Now, the question that you may ask of an Olivia Babsy Grange is, has the sports ministry done enough to sensitize um, the, the wider government yeah. as to the benefits... Or the Jamaica Cricket Association itself, because they have a role in this as yeah. well. I, I don't want to talk too much about the JCA. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, we have to leave this one here for today. That's all the time we got. But we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue with the show.